What is going on guys, it's Eagleman here. Welcome to a behind the scenes video. You guys saw the video where I opened or went through my boxes of like 10,000 plus baseball cards. Well, here are the same boxes unopened and I haven't gone through them yet because I'm gonna make a behind the scenes video of how I actually sort through these cards. A lot of people ask me, how do you go through so many cards? Like what is your process? How do you sort them? How do you determine if the card is good or not? So basically this video is gonna show you guys what I do behind the scenes and how I open up each package, what I do with the cards and just kind of give you my systematic process of how I do things. So hopefully you guys enjoy it maybe you guys can learn a few things and apply some of these uh some of these concepts to how you like to sort cards but enough of my talking let's go ahead and start diving into how i sort through all these cards so i start out by obviously taking out all the cards from the various packages i place all the cards into 5,000 count boxes or if they're already in like smaller storage boxes i'll just keep the cards in there for now and as i'm taking the cards out of the packaging i'm looking for any valuable cards that might catch my eye like as i'm flipping through the cards as i'm placing them carefully into other boxes if i see a valuable card i'll just set it aside to prevent it from possibly getting damages and moving cards around and i'll just attend to it later for the cards that are in like binder pages or plastic cases or top loaders or other odd protective cases I'll take them out if they don't appear to be too valuable and I'll place them in with the rest of the cards. Taking cards out of pages takes a while. It's really tedious. It's kind of annoying, honestly. But all while I'm taking cards out of their cases, I try my best to save all the supplies that I'm dealing with. So things like uh, penny sleeves, top loaders, team bags, binder pages, cases, one touches, anything at all, I try and save them so as to potentially repurpose them. Uh, I can use them for my own card protection, or if they're in kind of rough shape, I can use them to help myself safely ship some cards to people. Once all of the cards are out of their original packaging, and once all the cards are also out of their oddball cases and protectors and binder pages and whatnot, I'll start organizing the cards by decade. So since I'm dealing with about 15,000 plus sports cards in this collection specifically, what I like to do when I'm dealing with such a large collection is that I will progressively organize these cards into smaller groups. So first I'm gonna organize them into their respective decade, which includes things like the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s and 2020s in this case. I'll also make a vintage pile so that includes any card that is from 1979 and older in my opinion. And so I'll also create non-baseball card piles as well. Since I'm really only dealing with baseball cards specifically, that's really my expertise. All the other sports like football, hockey, basketball, etc., those will be placed in their own pile with their respective sport. I will deal with them later and I'll process them a little bit differently. But for now, we're just going to focus on mostly the baseball cards, which is mostly what this collection is that I'm dealing with. Since I have enough experience in dealing with card collecting already, specifically baseball cards, I'm able to quickly look at a card and at least tell what decade that card is from. So after all the cards are sorted into a pile of their corresponding decade, I'll sort each of those decade piles into their exact corresponding year. So I'll take all the cards from the early 2000s and I'll sort them into the years 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, etc. So this process might seem like it will take a while, but again, since I have so much experience dealing with baseball cards, I can usually just look at a card and tell what year it was made in. And some sets I do have trouble with and I need to you know, check the back of the card for the copyright date or I'll need to look online for what set it's in. But generally this process goes by fairly quickly, especially with certain collections. Sometimes people will ship a collection and the cards are already sorted in some manner. Oftentimes they will be sorted by decade or by year already or by set already, which makes things a lot easier. So I don't have to check every single card. I can grab a handful of cards and see that the border of the card are all the same color or same design. And I can kind of guess that all those cards are from the same set, same year, same decade, and quickly put them into a pile. So it actually doesn't take too long. So after the cards are all sorted into piles by their respective year, I'll sort each of those years by their set. So I'll take... Uh, each year card pile, like a year 2001 or year 2002, and I'll take each of those cards in that pile and I'll sort them by their set. I'm not necessarily going to put the cards in the exact order, like 1 through 200 or so. I'm just going to put the cards in a pile of their own set. And the reason I do this is because I'm organizing the cards further and further into smaller categories. The reason I sort these cards into smaller and smaller categories is because it helps me give me some context into what cards I'm dealing with. Because all, all in all, what I'm doing here by sorting through all these 15,000 plus cards or large collections in general is I'm sorting the cards into some sort of organization, but I'm also looking for the valuable cards. I wanna find the little diamonds in the rough while I'm sorting through this. So once I put the cards into a year and into a set, it gives me some sort of context to find something valuable. For example, let's say we're dealing with, I don't know, let's say a Barry Bonds card. So if I find a Barry Bonds card from, I don't know, 2005, 
it's not going to be necessarily the same value as it might be from 1986. And the reason I would know that is because, well, Barry Bonds has an XRC card in 1986. So if I'm flipping through a pile of 1986 Topps cards and I see Barry Bonds' name pop up, I'll know that card is valuable because it's Barry Bonds and it's his XRC card and it's in 1986. But if I'm flipping through the 2005 cards and I see a Barry Bonds card, it's not going to be as valuable as let's say a 1986 Barry Bonds card. So that's why I organize the cards into their years and their sets, uh, just to give me some context as to what cards I'm dealing with and to help me figure out if a card is actually worth something. So what do I do if I think a card is valuable? Well, I'll take that card and I'll kind of set it aside. And after I'm done flipping through all the sets in that year, I'll take those, those cards that I set aside and I'll look up the estimated value on eBay by looking at the completed sales. And I'll also go on to ComC, comc.com. I'll use that website to also check estimated values of cards. And if I think it's worth something, you know, I'll put a pen and sleeve on it. I'll put a top loader on it. I'll put that card into a one touch if it's really valuable. And if it's not super valuable, if I don't think it is worth something, I'll just put it back into the pile and it's set and then I'll just keep moving forward. So to kind of quickly recap how exactly I sort through such large collections like this, basically is I'll take all the cards out from the packaging. Then once the cards are all out of the packaging, I'll sort them by their decade just by quickly looking at them. Then once the cards are in their decade, I'll sort those cards by their each individual year. I'll put the cards into piles with the year that they were made in. Once I've done that, I'll take each year and I'll sort them by set. And then once they're sorted by set, I'll go through each pile of sets looking for potentially valuable cards. If something is valuable, I'll set it aside, look up the estimated value. If I think it's valuable, I'll put it in a top loader, put it in a one touch or set it aside in some way. If it's not valuable, I'll just put it back into the set and I'll just keep moving forward. So if you saw the original video where I showcased all the valuable cards that I picked out of that massive, massive 15,000 plus card collection, you're probably wondering, what did I do with all the other common cards? What am I going to do with all those cards? Well, what I usually do with all those cards is I will sort them into sets. I'll try and complete sets. I have tons of uncompleted sets sitting on a shelf, and I try and take all those cards that I got, sort them into those sets, and see if I can complete a set. If I get duplicate cards, I'll usually take out those duplicate cards, and what I do with those duplicate common cards is I'll, I'll create lots on eBay and sell them in bulk collections for really, really cheap. Or I'll just donate them to Cards for Kids or donate them to local children's hospitals. It's a great way to get rid of the commons. Yes, it is a little time consuming to put the cards in exact order. That's the part that takes a long time. It's not so much the part of sorting the cards by year and by decade. That part actually goes by really quickly. It's the part where you're putting the cards in exact card order. Card 1 through 700 in the exact order. That takes a little bit of time. But it's also, it's not so bad for me. I find it a little bit therapeutic. I enjoy sorting cards like that. Plus, there's a way you can make a little bit of money off it. It's usually not a lot of money. I'll usually sell around 2,500 cards for about 10 bucks, between 10 and 20 bucks, depending on what kind of cards are in that lot. But that's usually how I sell them and get rid of them and pass them off to someone else who would want to build sets or do something with those cards but that's basically it that's how i essentially sort large collections you guys got a little bit of a look of behind the scenes of how i like to sort cards hopefully you guys learned something from it hopefully you guys enjoyed this and took something away from it and maybe we'll apply it to your own collecting habits i would love for you guys to comment below what your guys' thoughts are what criticisms you have, what ideas you may have been sparked by. I would love to know your own sorting habits. Maybe you can change my way of sorting to make it more efficiently. But other than that, I really, really appreciate you guys tuning in today. If you guys enjoyed it, please like and subscribe for more of these videos to come. This has been Eagle Man. I will see you guys next time.